Episode 7 of Furies begins with the police van tipped over and all the officers dead, killed in a flurry of gunfire. Our captive Furies are still alive, alongside Keda and Ellie, but they're not going down without a fight. Led by Keda, they show up at a nearby cafe out in the woods and use that as a refuge to try and escape from the attack. She hands over a note to the owner and encourages him to go to the police station and tell them what's happening, which is about 30 miles away. I mean, surely he has a phone, right? Anyway, enough of that. The guy rides off on his bike. Kata checks out the place and tries to secure this large area, while Driss attempts to grab a fork to fight his way out. Lana stops him, though, and he drops the weapon. Unfortunately, the radio that's inside isn't much good as Kata is played by Parker's men and women, who show up and intend to clear house. Selma, Driss, and Lina are kept downstairs in handcuffs, but it's clearly the wrong move, given Parkes has about a dozen or so men to fight against Ellie and Keda. Driss encourages Lina to work with him to free themselves from this predicament, which works rather well when he pulls her toward him and frees her from the flimsy pipe she's handcuffed to. Unfortunately, the gunfight upstairs begins while the pair in the basement struggle to revive Selma, who's knocked out. Lana manages to unlock the handcuffs, while Keda is quickly shot up top. Dristo manages to free himself from the handcuffs, helped by Selma when she wakes back up, and he holds Parker's men at gunpoint, including Orso who shows up inside. However, it doesn't take long for all of the armed guards to be mowed down in a flurry of bullets out in the open, all at the hands of this Damocles character. With all of Parker's men killed, gunshots rain down inside the building. Selma is wise to what's happening, though, given the sniper fire trained on them, and she fires off a fire extinguisher to give them cover, enough for them to hide out for the time being. Selma explains to the others while they're hiding that these guys are international mercenaries and the worst of them is Damocles, whom Olympus have called in to finish the job. Lina does manage to sneak downstairs, though, and she stuffs a pistol inside a stuffed toy's mouth, hanging on the wall. With all the gang together, Lina and Selma talk on the rooftop. The former almost gets her head blown off by the sniper, but they find their prize. They manage to uncover something they can use a bomb coming in the form of a gas canister. Orso admits that there are five men outside and all of them have night vision goggles, tactical gear, and a myriad of other trinkets that will make their job of holding out and surviving that much tougher. A real spanner is thrown in the works when the cafe owner shows back up again. He's strapped up with a bomb and hurries inside, apologizing profusely and admitting that he's just trying to protect his family. The bomb explodes, everything goes up in flames, and both Orso and Ellie find themselves in the line of fire. With a choice to make, Lina jumps on Orso and protects him while Ellie gets a bullet in his chest. The tactic assault goes ahead and gunfire rains down. However, the group do manage to get somewhat of an edge, throwing the canister in the doorway and firing on it, letting it explode the canister on impact. However, one man is still here, and he works his way inside. Orso is shot numerous times while Lina runs away. This man is out of bullets with his minigun, so he uses his pistol but walks very slowly and refuses to fire immediately because deus ex machina, of course. The guy continues forward and walks right into a trap and is impaled through the stomach. Keda is still alive, too and she holds a gun up at Lina's face when she shows in the aftermath of the gunfight. Before Kedev can kill Lina, chalking it up to resisting arrest, Ellie shoots her in the head. When Lina comes face to face with Selma, she holds a gun up to her face and accuses her of killing her own mom, something that Driss told her earlier in the episode before hightailing it away. Selma looks Lina dead in the eye and admits she should have killed her but didn't. It turns out Kahina was an undercover cop for years, but she didn't pull the trigger. It was Driss. He tracked down Kahina's family and killed them all. The episode review. So now we're getting to crunch time and everything is gearing up for a very exciting finale to follow. This whole episode was just one massive gunfight and it actually works in the show's favor. 
However, there is some annoying deus ex machina at the end, especially as that armed soldier could have easily shot Lana outright rather than stalking her and walking slowly toward her. That's a bit annoying. We now have a good deal of answers, and the ending does hint that we've got more drama on the horizon, especially as this final fight with Driss looks set to hit fever pitch. Quite who comes out of this in one piece is anyone's guess, but we'll have to wait and see.